Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Smith. Thank you for being patient. I know we're a little bit late today. Uh, I am a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens, and today on our Thursday edition live stream, we are talking about our plant of the week. So last week we were talking about Disneyland roses, and this week we are talking about the much anticipated uh, native milkweed. So it is finally here, everybody. Come in and get your native milkweed. Um, we're really excited to have it. You can see it's still fairly small. Uh, the native milkweed dies down completely down to the ground. Uh, that's what makes this so special and so great here for planting in Southern California. Um, so we finally got it all in. It's all in one gallons. Uh, super, super beautiful. We have it out on the floor today officially. Um, and I'm here to explain a little bit how to uh, plant it, how to maintain it, what to expect from it, um, how to grow it successfully uh, to support all of your monarchs in your garden, why we plant it, um, and then um, answer some of your questions and stuff afterwards. So um, this is native milkweed. This is very different than your tropical milkweed that you're used to seeing um, a lot of times planted in the gardens here. Um, the way that I tell everybody is if you're seeing your flower on your milkweed and it is red or yellow or orange, it's the tropical milkweed. It is not a native milkweed. Um, if the flowers are pink or white, then you're dealing with a native milkweed. And that's the type that we want to grow here uh, for all of our monarchs. Um, the monarch population, if you're growing milkweed, you're already probably aware of this, but it is declining. Uh, they've been considered for the endangered species list quite a few different times. Um, and there's multiple, multiple reasons for that. Um, but one of the things that we can do to help that is make sure that when we're planting milkweed, which is the only food source for the caterpillars, is milkweed. Um, that we're planting the right kind. Uh, the problem with the tropical milkweed, and if you've grown this in your garden, you know, um, it does not die down. So it stays up year round, even sometimes flowers in the wintertime. Um, and that's not good because what happens is there's a buildup of a microscopic uh, protozoan that builds up on the leaves. And because it doesn't die completely down, it builds up and builds up and builds up. And that becomes a problem for the baby caterpillar. And then as it matures and gets older, it stays on its body. And then when it's mating with the other butterflies, it's passing it around. And that's one of the big problems for the decline in the population of the monarchs. It's not necessarily that it doesn't die down. There's a lot of misconception. People think that it's because it doesn't die down, it doesn't encourage them to migrate. But here, unlike most places, the butterflies don't migrate a lot anyway. So that's not the problem. The problem is the fact that it doesn't die down completely. So I always tell people, if you do have the tropical and you absolutely refuse to take the tropical, out of your garden, you can kind of help the problem a little bit, but it's kind of a lengthy process. What you have to do is in the winter time, so just after Christmas, you got to cut it all the way down to about just four inches or so. Then if it grows up any more um, leaves or anything on it, you got to cut that down again. And you got to keep cutting it down and cutting it down and cutting it down until about mid-March. Um, so it has to be cut down completely. This is good for the butterflies. You do not want to have any of that milkweed left in your yard. The awesome part about all the natives is it does it that on its own. So um, it dies completely down. So when people are coming in and looking for milkweed, the native kind, you know, in December, January, February, we're not going to have it because we'd basically be just selling you a little can with roots <laughs> and you wouldn't have anything above ground. All of my native milkweed that I planted about two years ago is about this big as well. Uh, so it's just starting to come out from its dormancy. So it's a really important thing when you're planting the native that you remember where you planted it so you don't actually accidentally dig it up. <laughs> I have made that mistake quite a few times as I'm digging and planting new bulbs. I go, oh, oops, there's roots there from something. It's usually from my milkweed. Um, when you're planting your native milkweed, it's really best to have quite a few in your garden. Just one or two is not going to really cut it. Um, once those little caterpillars hatch, they're hungry and they eat really, really fast. So you probably want about seven uh, on average to support uh, your population. Uh, that's really, really important. You want to plant it in a full sun area, ideally. It wants really good drainage. And you don't want to plant in an area where you're constantly watering all the time. Remember, it's a native. It grows naturally all over the hills here. It grows naturally uh, all over Southern California. And 
it's not getting irrigated. It's not getting fertilized. It's just doing its own thing. So you need to plant yours in an area where you can kind of control that. So the way I do it is I plant it where my roses are. Um, that way I am really careful because I hand water my roses. So I don't water right where the, the roots of this are. You don't want to overwater it. That can definitely be a problem for it. Um, and then you want to make sure that you're really giving it water when we're getting a lot of rain. So it's kind of a little counterintuitive. You're watering it when it's raining out. Uh, it does need that springtime water, uh, but then you want to definitely cut that down in the summertime. You don't want to overwater it, but that's when I slow down on my roses anyway, so it works out really, really well there. Um, it will get really nice and big. It'll get a flower on it. The flower, like I said, is kind of a white or pinkish color. It's a very pretty flower, um, so you just remember that white, pink flower, good. The red, orange, yellow flowers, not so good. Uh, if you do have those, you can cut those down, but you got to keep cutting them down, cut them down, cutting them down. So that way you're getting rid of all that protozoa and you're throwing all that milkweed away. So that's very, very important. Um, so come on to the store. We finally got them. They're here. Stock up on your milkweed. It's really, really exciting. It's a great thing to have in your garden. It's so nice to see those monarchs come in and have them in your yard and feel like you're doing something good uh, for that population uh, that has been slowly dwindling down uh, for quite some time now.